In this episode, we're talking about biblical hope, so sit back, stay tuned for more. Hey there, welcome to another episode of Monday Moments, the show in which we take a deeper dive into Sunday Sermon. With me today is Pastor James, I'm your host Travis, and today we're talking about biblical hope. Uh, It was kind of a special Sunday, we had our kids' Christmas program, um, but we always end up that Sunday with a uh, a little kind of mini sermon, if you will, and so we're continuing in a sense... Um, the Kingdom Has Come series, even though it was a little bit different of a Sunday. Mm -hmm. And before we dive into today's uh, conversation, if you haven't had a chance to watch or listen to Sunday Sermon, you can do so on our website, on our YouTube channel, or wherever you get your uh, favorite podcasts. Excuse me. (laughs) Uh, Without further ado, let's jump into it. Um, So you talked a little bit about, not a little bit, it was all about hope. And um, a continuation a little bit is where my mind was going of, of last Sunday's sermon, which you talked a lot about the hope of Christmas yeah. and the hope of, of Christ. And we talked a little bit about, you know, can you place your hope and trust and, and really recognize your need for a Savior um, without going through, uh, you know, the kind of that rock bottom point, mm. if you will. So yeah. I, I, yeah. I thought this was a, another <clears throat> continuation, a really good continuation of that discussion of biblical hope. And you talking a little bit about Zacharias and, yeah. and the hope uh, that was in Jesus. And so anyways, I wonder if you, if you might just give a, a brief recap and, and sort of the big idea of what Sunday's message was about. Yeah, so, you know, Zacharias, he, he was the father of John the Baptist, mm-hmm. uh, married to Elizabeth, uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus' cousin. Um, and, you know, a lot of times we, we, we talk about the... Um, the angel coming in and speaking to Mary. And for a lot of people, that's where the story begins. But um, but that 400 years of silence was actually broken with Zacharias. Yeah. He was he was the priest, and uh, the Bible refers to both him and Elizabeth as being righteous. They were, um, they were adherents to mm-hmm. what God had called them to. And um, and yet there was a there was a big issue in their life that um, a desire that had carried on for uh, a long time and that they were they were barren and the Bible says that they were they were both older and um, when the angel comes and visits Zacharias the the place that the angel begins is by telling them that um, that the their their request had not fallen on deaf ears and yeah. I think that a lot of times um, we can feel like, our requests are falling on deaf ears, like the Lord doesn't know or He doesn't care, and um, it's really it's a beautiful picture of the Lord um, not just responding to um, the desires of Zacharias and Elizabeth, um, but what He goes on to say about what this son will be and and how every part of this was the fulfillment of of the prophecy of of Christ. Yeah, and I think we have. So many examples, whether it's in our own life or um, examples of people in the Bible who mm-hmm. experience similar situations. You know, Joseph had his dream, yeah, and yet spent so many years in prison. Um, the promise of of Isaac to Abraham and Sarah, um, even Daniel. You know, when he began to pray, uh, it was what twenty something days before yeah. the angel responded and said, yeah. "Daniel, from when you first prayed, God heard." Yeah, um, and and yet there was that that. Um, difference of time between, yeah. you know, what God said and and the fulfillment yeah. of of that promise, and and it, I think it's just such a relatable thing that because of our humanness, we have a finite perspective of time. Yeah. Whereas God has the beginning, the middle, and the end; like He sees it all, mm-hmm. and yet we see the the very small part. And so um, there is that. That that tension and that waiting and and just that you know is is God hearing me? It, yeah. Are my are my prayers being heard? You know, is this in vain? Is it, you know whatever the case may be? Yeah, and I think that like we talked about a couple of weeks ago, I think that the hard thing is with hope is that we we oftentimes attach our hope to something that's very tangible, some yeah. kind of a desired outcome. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we we talked two weeks ago about um, maybe if I can change my location, yeah. uh, maybe I can change my people, maybe mm-hmm. if I can change these things and. So we always we always look at hope as as having this um, this desired outcome. But when Scripture talks about hope, it's it's not talking about an outcome. It's talking about a person. It's yeah. and, and and the only person that that can really be found in is is in Jesus. And um, you know, for 
for uh, Zacharias and Elizabeth, their their hope, their commitment, their their righteousness, their faithfulness to those things um, was based in the fact that they they believed God. They, yeah. they believed His Word. They believed what He said, and as a result. Um, the Lord, the Lord used them, and and the amazing thing is that had God not provided them with a son, He would still have been sovereign. Mm-hmm. He still would have been righteous. He still would have been all of these things, and their hope in Him would still would would still have been placed in the right place. Yeah. And and I think that that's what gets to be a challenge at times is that when our when our hope is based only on a single outcome. Yeah. Instead of in saying, "Lord, I know that you know what's best." Yeah. And and I'm going to put my hope in in you and and ultimately in the 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 plan that that you can see that I cannot. Mm-hmm. Um and that's a hard that's a hard thing yeah. because we yeah. we like our we like our outcomes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, we were we were kind of reviewing um, a, a Bible project video on on biblical hope, mm-hmm. and uh, I like the way Tim Mackey said it. It's the difference between um, hope, biblical hope, and optimism. Yeah, optimism really yeah. is based on your circumstances. Yeah. you know, like you said, it could be your location, it could be yeah. your relationships, it could be your financial, you know, status or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and optimism says, well, I'm just going to look and see the best in every situation and, and maybe things will get better and, yeah. that, and then I'll really be good. You know, yeah. it's all situation based. And yet hope is biblical hope and Christian hope is based on a person. And we yeah. know that that is God. And um, the thing that's beautiful about that is similar to joy that whether circumstances in our situation improves or doesn't improve. Yeah. We know that God is good, and we're going to trust Him. Yeah, and and I think that that's where where hope really comes in. It's like you said, it, it it's not based on um, my my social status, my yeah. financial status, our our political status. It, it's not based on any of those things. Yeah. it's that no matter what happens, good or bad, God is on the throne, and and God's going to fulfill His word and His promises. Yeah. Um something that you talked about in your message was doubt and you mm-hmm. kind of um, kind of dove into um, this topic of doubt with the limited time that you had. And yeah. so what I think is interesting is that you hear you have someone like Zacharias who was very faithful. I mean, he mm-hmm. faithfully served and believed God and, and was righteous in that yeah. sense. And yet even, even, even though he was described as those things, an angel appeared to him and yeah. he still doubted. Yeah, and I was wondering if maybe you could talk a little bit more about this this place that we all find ourselves in is doubt. You know, we, we have God's promises in mm-hmm. the Bible. You know, yeah. we read the Old Testament. We see how God was faithful in the Old Testament. We see the 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 life, um, death, and resurrection of Jesus. We see all of the promises that are laid out in Scripture, and yet we still have doubt. Can you yeah. maybe talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, I think that I think that doubt is always based upon based upon our our intellectual ability to um, to comprehend what is being said. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so Zacharias, his his doubt, um, his doubt was less about. Um, the Messiah coming and more about his wife being able to conceive a baby. Yeah. Like he looked at these things from a very, um, from a very concrete standpoint. He said, uh, my wife is, is too old. Yeah. Uh, to very delicately said Very that. delicately said. She's too yeah. Old. <laughs> <laughs> um, but when, when we, when we doubt, we're, we're doubting. Um, I, I think most of the time we're doubting our own ability mm. to accomplish these things. And, and 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 God is not limited to my ability. He's not yeah. limited to my circumstances. He's not limited to my knowledge or my wisdom or my resources. He he's able to do all of these things. And so I, I do think it's a very relatable moment for us when we look at Zacharias and he says, How how is this gonna happen? I'm 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 old, she's old, you know, these things these things can't take place. But but I mean with Mary you know, Mary, Mary, she gets credit for like the great faith. She says, as you're, you know, as you have said, may it be done unto me. Yeah. May it be done unto me. And so she gets, she gets credit for having, 
you know, this, this tremendous faith. But when we look at, um, when we, when we look at people who have doubted in Scripture, mm-hmm. it always comes down to a physical inability to accomplish these things. Mm-hmm. Abraham, when Abraham and Sarah, he, he doubts God that God can provide Sarah um, with, with a child, and so he, he, takes, he takes Hagar, and, and she provides Ishmael. Um, yeah. and, and even then, Abraham's desire is that Ishmael would be the son, and the Lord says, "No, it's it's going to be done um, this way." And and over and over and over, when we see doubt come, it's it's always based in in um, in in us not being able to accomplish those things. And I think that that's the I think that's the real challenge with faith yeah. is that is that faith faith really begins where my um, where 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 my abilities end. Mm-hmm. Because if I can accomplish this on my own, it doesn't require faith. And 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 I would say that that doubt, um, in its purest form, is the absence of faith. Yeah, Zacharias just said, "I don't, I don't see how this is possible." And and every one of us has experienced those moments. Mm-hmm. Like when we come to the end of our ability, we're thinking, "Wait, wait a second. I have to now completely rely upon God mm, mm-hmm. for the outcome. That's a that can be a very terrifying place to be mm-hmm. because yeah. we we recognize that we can no longer influence the outcome. I don't I don't have what it takes and that's a that's a tough place to be. Well, and even Mary had that moment where she said, how can this be? I've yeah. not known a man. I'm a virgin, <clears throat> yeah. you know, and, and yeah. she even had that question. I mean, I think yeah. it's just natural for our humanness yeah. to see like this doesn't logically make sense. You know, this doesn't yeah. obey the laws of science. Yeah. And, and yet, yeah. you know, God's in the business of doing the impossible. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Peter, uh, you know, walking on the water. I mean, yeah. it, it was it was remarkable that that even took place. Mm-hmm. But then what what happened was that he began to look around at his circumstances and all of a sudden the reality sets in that says, this shouldn't be happening. Yeah. Like this yeah. is not, <laughs> this is not possible. Yes. Um, and, and, and so we, we see oftentimes that progression and, and for us to be able to look at scripture and go, you know what, there, this is a, th- this is something that a lot of people have struggled with. I don't think that it gives us a pass. I don't think that we should look at it and go, we'll see, you know, I have a I have a reason now not to have faith, but I think that it should be an encouragement to us, especially when we're experiencing doubt, to go, okay, uh, other people who have who have really loved the Lord and the Lord has used mightily mm-hmm. have experienced mm-hmm. these um, these same things. I know we've talked about it before, but like I think that's the beauty of I think that's the beauty of Scripture. I think that's one of the things that proves out Scripture so much is it it's it's not a it's not a collection of like. Israel's greatest successes. Yeah. I mean, there's there's a lot of those in it, but sure. it's primarily Israel's failures. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> and like who would who would put yeah. together a book that's like, hey, let me highlight all of the ways that we messed up We've and missed, yeah. and we didn't do these things. Um, but yet, what it always does is it always points back to God's faithfulness. Mm-hmm. Like God didn't look at Zacharias because he doubted and said, "Okay, I take it back." Yeah, Gabriel just said, okay, you're not actually going to be able to talk about these things. I am going to let my words mm. speak for themselves. Yeah. In other words, you're not going to have the opportunity now to go out and, and say all of these things. My words are going to speak for themselves. And the next time you open your mouth, mm-hmm. it's going to be filled with my voice. Yeah. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful story. Yeah, and I think we come to this point where we have to... <clears throat> make a choice when, yeah. when God calls us to something that's so far beyond ourselves that it seems impossible. Um, we can choose to be humble mm-hmm. and trust that, like you said, fully rely on God yeah. and his provision, or we can be humiliated, yeah. you know, and, um, you know, uh, there's that fine line. And I think if we can willingly submit to the Lord and say, this doesn't make sense to me, yeah. you know, even uh, like Mary, yeah, yeah. this doesn't make sense to me, but yeah. May it be done, you know? Yeah, and, and, you know, one of the things that I didn't get to take a lot of time, but I thought a lot about was here is Zacharias and Elizabeth, much older. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we don't know how old they were, but Zacharias obviously felt like she was beyond the years of being able to bear a yeah. child. Um, and yet what we know about Mary is that Mary was 
a young girl. Right. I mean, she was probably just a couple years um, on the other side of being able to bear a child. And I can only imagine how many years, probably decades, mm-hmm. that uh, Zacharias and Elizabeth had longed for, had prepared for, had desired um, a child, and yet her womb had been closed all of that time. And yet um, the Lord's timing in all of this is remarkable yeah. because Elizabeth becomes pregnant at a time which which from a from a from a physical standpoint they had probably given up hope they had probably already resolved themselves to the fact that they were not going to yeah, have it's not going to happen uh, for a us. child yeah. and yet that child came at the perfect time in history yeah. to be exactly who that child was called to be John mm-hmm. was called to be the forerunner he was called to be the one and so again like i said yesterday had elizabeth had a baby mm-hmm prior to that point, Mm -hmm. well, one, this child would still have been a miracle because of, you know, the age, but, but it wouldn't have been as significant. It it wouldn't have been like she was barren and then she was given this child and he, and and so I look at the timing of these things and, and how it had to be at this time. It could not have been earlier Mm -hmm. because Mary would not have been prepared. She, I mean, maybe would have even been born. Yeah. Um, and and hear all of these things begin. And so I think about that a lot in my own life when when I'm praying for something and I I in my mind oftentimes I, I would love to say that I don't, but I oftentimes have a time frame. I'm like, oh if if this needs to happen at this yeah. at this time. Um but then to see over and over how God's timing um is is not just better. His timing is perfect. Perfect um, yeah. for these things. Yeah, and that's really hard for us to grapple and and accept yeah. because yeah, we look at time differently than God does. Yeah. And and I remember, um, you know, when I was in high school, you know, went to private school and had chapel and everything. Mm-hmm. We had a speaker come and he described that God's not a microwave God; He's an yeah. oven God. Yeah. And you know, we love the immediacy of the microwave, uh, but when you take the time to let things bake in the oven, it mm-hmm. always turns out better. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so we try to put God in this time box of saying, it's got to happen this way or that way, or, yeah. you know, this time and that time. And yet God's saying, no, I know exactly what time this needs to happen. And we have to step back and, and take our hands out of the mix and say, mm-hmm. okay, God, I'm going to, I'm going to trust you yeah. because you know better than I do. And that's where that, that humility comes in yeah. where we have to say like, look, I'm not, I'm not going to try to be the the savior, the the maestro orchestrator of my life. I'm going to let God be the one who's really in control yeah. and and trust that his timing is perfect. Even though I'm like, God, this is down to the wire. Yeah. You know, if yeah, you don't come getting, through we're now. We're getting to that point. Yeah. Um, and just, I, I know we don't have time. We're already kind of running short on time, mm-hmm. but to, would love to dive more into kind of what we learn in the, in the, that Bible project video about hope, you know, mm, the, 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 yeah. the Hebrew word, you know, especially the kava, you know, is that yeah. tension. And I think yeah. that's what we experience is that tension between the promise and the fulfillment, yeah. you know, um, that word is like, it, it, it's, it comes out of the word for cords, you know, and you think of rope cords being pulled tight mm-hmm. until there's a release. Yeah. And, and so I think we see that over and over again in scriptures that there is that tension between the promise, especially when you read the Old Testament mm-hmm. prophets, you know, they had the, the promise. God was giving them the word that there will be a Messiah. And yet 400 years. Yeah. It was silent. Yeah. Silence. Um, and, and yet all of a sudden the, the tension is beginning to be released through John the Baptist yeah. and then through Mary. And we start to see that fulfillment. Um, and so I think <clears throat> to be able to begin to turn our eyes backwards. Mm-hmm which sounds ironic Mm -hmm. and it sounds counterintuitive into here's what God has done in the past, whether in my life or in somebody's life who I know. And to use that as a foundation to say, I know that God is trustworthy in the future, yeah, regardless of what my circumstances look like. Um, I think that's where biblical hope begins to set root in our hearts yeah. and we can allow that to transform the way that we look at life and look at circumstances to say like, I'm, I'm not going to base my 
outlook on life on my circumstances. Yeah. I'm not going to base my faith on feelings, yeah. on positions in, in life. I'm going to base it on who Jesus is yeah. and what he's done. And I know that he is going to be faithful because yeah. no matter what it looks like, God said that he would always be faithful. He would always provide. He would always fill in the blank, Yeah, know, whatever yeah. that is. So, well, I know we're out of time and I always wish we could talk a little yeah. bit more about it, but thank you for taking time out of your day to, to dive more Absolutely. into your uh, sermon. And thank you for watching or listening to another episode of Monday Moments. We hope that you got something out of this. And if you did, as always, let us know. Leave a comment, send us a message, um, however you want to share some feedback with us because we love hearing from you. Uh, thank you again so much for joining us for another episode of Monday Moments, and we will see you next week.